kids and welcome back to my freaking channel. It is I, Julianne, and we are back at it with another monthly plan with me. It is the end of March, which means we're planning for April, and this month I don't know what happened, but I don't have like an ounce of creativity left in my brain, so I just want to go with something super simple but still cute. So this month's theme is just daisies, drawn in a very puffy, bubbly way. So if you're here to play with me, make sure you have your stationery ready, and if you're here just to hang out, make sure you have a snack, a beverage, and let's get on with the video. Hello, voice over here. These are the pens that I'll be using for today. For me, this is keeping it real minimal. One day, I'd love to try to make an entire spread just using one color. That'd be sickeronies, but it would probably be the end of me. I like get a twitch in my hand when I try to keep things minimal. It's like I'm going through withdrawal or something. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. I'm getting started with outlining my doodles with a Pigma Micron in 02. Currently my favorite pen to doodle in, but I'm not really in love with the way it writes. I much prefer like a G2 Pilot or some really nice jelly pen for writing. Pigmas just aren't very forgiving to a lazy hand since they're not really flexible in terms of writing angle. I just feel like you have to draw with them at a very specific angle to get the quality that it's capable of and I'm just, you know, when I'm planning my day, I'm not trying to do all that. Even though I come off as a very type A type of person, I'm also extremely lazy and it's really hard for me to build habits. So in order for me to even bullet journal at all every single day, I need to make things as easy as possible down to the pen. Like the pen needs to be as easy to use as possible or I just won't do it. For the coloring, I want to go with something fast and effortless looking. The spread has a really delicate feel to it and I didn't want to overwhelm it with intense coloring. This is a technique I use pretty often, so if you've seen my other videos, you're familiar with it. But I'm just going to take my color here and I'm only going to color where there would be a shadow. And for the little details, I am coloring them in full, but I'm keeping it super flat, no shadowing, no going over more than one time, just nice and easy. And you know what? That is the true theme here today, folks, is me attempting to take the path of least resistance. Emphasis on attempting. For I am, for some reason, addicted to the path of most resistance. I don't know why I am that way, but it seems to be a habit that I cannot break. Anyone else like that? Like you have to earn something? It might be a middle child thing, like a chip on the shoulder type of deal, but I don't know. I'm sick of like putting my nose in the grindstone. I, don't, I really don't know what the phrase is, but you know, you know the phrase. I'm sick of it. I'm tired. I am ready to retire. But anyway, as intro me had mentioned, this spread was birthed from a time crunch, essentially. As all great ideas are. <laughs> I suddenly became stupid busy towards the end of this month and I had no ideas left in my brain for a crazy creative spread. So naturally I went to Instagram, I asked you guys for any suggestions, and someone suggested daisies which I was immediately attracted to because of how fast it would be to set it up, and also daisies are just super duper cute. And they always somehow appear in my spreads anyway. I've also recently followed a new artist on Twitter and Instagram, and this person draws the cutest flowers I've ever seen. They're always super bubbly looking and round and just so cute, I couldn't help but also try it out. So initially, it was just like a bubble daisies concept, but then I thought they kind of looked like pool inflatables, and that's where the little water ripples came in. So what started out as a super simple concept evolved to yet another convoluted Julian Doodles concept. It's still simple though, and relatively fast to set up. Moving on to the tracker spread, I am just setting up all of the sections. We got the usuals, habit tracker, goals, shop notes. The shop notes this month are a little different though, they are also going to be convention notes and to-do lists for that convention, since I'm going to be going to WonderCon in Anaheim. I'm going to be doing the Artist Alley there from April 1st to April 3rd, so if you're in the area, I'll be there at table F17. That's why I got stupid busy all of a sudden. They gave us a super short notice. I don't know why it was so last minute, but it's literally so annoying. Like it obviously sucks for many, many reasons, but for me, it mostly sucks because in the past two conventions I went to, I had super short notice from being late and signing up. And it was a goal of mine this year to not be last minute and have some actual time to prep. Cause for all I know right now, conventions are just panic and sadness and just angst all around. That is my feeling around conventions. 
And this year, I did everything I could possibly do to prevent this, and it still happened, so that sucks. I tried my best to be responsible, and there's literally nothing I can do, so I'm just trying not to think about it, just let it go, and throw myself into prep. In the corners to add some pizzazz, I'm drawing in little bunches of puffy daisies and ignore the idea of the water ripples for the moment. Don't panic, they'll come back in just a sec. I think they look so cute bunched up, they look like bubbles or like balloon art. Oh, and actually, the water ripples came back way faster than I had anticipated. Writing a script seems like it could be beneficial in moments like these. I'm drawing these puffy floating daisies above my big task tracker. This tracker has been one of my favorite things I've recently implemented into my spread. Before, I had like a giant yearly tracker or like giant project tracker in my yearly spread. But recently, I've been really liking also creating a monthly tracker and also a weekly tracker. This way, I can like break down all of my giant tasks and it really helps me keep track of them and not fall behind or get overwhelmed. I dip my toes into like so many different things. It's so easy to forget about projects even if they're huge. So this has been an absolute lifesaver for my anxiety and busy schedule. Like let's say that I'm trying to write a book, which I'm not, definitely not trying to write a book, but let's say that is one of my goals for this year. I can break that giant yearly task down into the months and then I can take that and break it down even further into the weeks so that I have manageable little tasks to build up to this giant book project. Like, doesn't that just sound so organized? It's so nice. It's like how I remember people who I used to look up to being like, oh my God, these people are so responsible. They're so organized. This is like how they would do things. And like now finally implementing it into my life, I'm like, oh my God, am I that person? I'm not, but I'm really trying. And it's all about playing pretend until it actually happens, right? Like currently I am cosplaying as a organized queen and I'm just hoping that it like seeps into my body and I just one day metamorphosize into that person. Moving on to the weekly spread, I'm using little paper and sticky note doodles for each day of the week. I've been using less paper lately for my dailies because what, did I just say paper? I've been using less space, which I guess is using less paper. But anyway, I've been using less space for my dailies because I'm trying not to overbook my days. I have a tendency to be over ambitious and it just makes me sad at the end of the day when I didn't live up to my unrealistic goals. Classic. So I've adopted the method of just trying to focus on two to three large tasks in a single day and some mini ones when I have time or when it's 2 p.m. and my mind is scrambled eggs. I've also been tracking how I feel throughout a day on an Excel sheet by the hour. So in two weeks, I will have collected enough data where I can start scheduling my day based on how productive I'm usually feeling. Which sounds kind of crazy and is very meticulous of me, but the little science nerd in me has never been happier. In the corners, I'm just adding in some more puffy flowers. I always draw in like these little dots and circles. You totally don't have to, but I personally feel like they make everything look a lot more whimsical and cute. Also, you get so much bang for your buck. Like it takes almost no time to do, but it adds so much to the doodle itself. I have always been really attracted to the types of art styles that are soft and whimsical even though it's like the complete opposite of my personality. I've been experimenting a lot more with my art and seeing what feels right. And I've been trying to create more art that I admire. I feel like it's really easy to get lost in the sauce and make art for other people. But lately, I've just really been focusing on myself and how I would like to grow as an artist. On Instagram, I'm going to be posting a lot more art and also just like my life as an artist type of stuff. Of course, we will always have bullet journaling as a staple. It's my love. But as my interests grow and as I grow as an artist, I don't really want to limit myself for the sake of a cute Instagram feed or consistency and like even growth. Like I don't really care anymore. Like I just want to do what feels right to me. I've kind of let go of the idea of trying to be a super big artist on social media. Is it a dream to be able to make art for a living and like whatever kind of art I want to make? Yes, absolutely. But working towards that goal has only ever made me not want to be an artist. Like in the moment, I just don't want to make anything anymore and I produce way less art. 
happen. So in the time where I could have been developing and growing as an artist and trying to find my style, I've just been trying to impress other people and it's just not working out for me. I'm not growing and I'm not happy, so I mean, I might as well just do whatever I want and grow just for me. Which sounds like very intuitive and like, oh my god, of course, you're so dumb for not knowing that beforehand, but you really have to go through it to fully understand. And I know, I know, I'm a repeater. I talk about this type of thing like all the time because I've been struggling with it for so long and I have never been more comfortable and resolute in what I believe now. Like this idea really sits with me very well. I just want to focus on my real life career and take the pressure off of what I love doing. I may never be a full-time artist and that's okay because I know I'll get better and I know I'll be happy doing it. And this is like not a sign to give up on your dreams, it's a, a sign to be happy with what you have. And I feel like because of this new mindset, I'm gonna be posting more than ever. I want to create so many different things and I can't wait to show everyone. And I don't feel bogged down by the pressure. Like before when I used to say like, oh my God, I have so many things I wanna show you guys and I wanna make so many things for you guys. I would end up just like not making it because I would just be crippled with fear and pressure and anxiety. But now I'm like, ooh, so many things that I want to make. And it's fun, like I'm having a great time. And anyway, that was quite a bit of ranting. Thank you for listening. I think the video is wrapping up just about now. Enjoy the pretty spread. Thank you so, so, so much for watching my video. It means the whole freaking world to me. My camera's dying, so if you guys want to see any more videos from me, subscribe to my channel. If you like the video, like the video. If you guys want to leave a comment, leave a comment in the comment section down below. I love the comments. And if you guys want to see anything else from me, check out the description box. It has all my social media, has my sticker shop, has all my supplies, and that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Bye!